Hi, good morning. Welcome to today's topic about crystal structure. So, before we are moving to the topic, we need to know some details. Generally, the solid materials are classified into crystalline and non-crystalline materials. In a crystalline materials, the atoms arranged in a periodic manner in all the directions. Your direction means here, crystalline material can be considered as three-dimensional form. It is a three-dimensional form. In the crystalline materials, there are monocrystalline materials as well as polycrystalline materials are again existed. So here, what is the exact definition of crystal? A crystal is a solid whose molecules or atoms are arranged in a repeating pattern. What is the example? Diamond, salt, quartz. So here in the crystal materials, the atoms are, molecules are, whatever there, they must be in a repeating pattern. So the repeating pattern of elements or atoms are called crystalline materials or crystals. So the other type of material is what? Non-crystalline material. The non-crystalline materials are also called as amorphous. So here amorphous example is what? A powder. Amorphous can be considered as non-crystalline because of it is different from crystalline material. For example, when you consider sugar cube and face powder, there is a lot of difference between face cube, sorry, face, face powder and sugar cube. Sugar cube is having certain shape, melting point, certain characteristics it is having. Similarly, face powder also having certain properties but they are not same as two sugar cube. So why the crystalline how sorry how the crystalline and non-crystalline amorphous are separated look here. So in terms of shape Crystalline materials of definite characteristics, definite shape, but amorphous having a regular shape. In terms of melting point, so crystalline material melt at a sharp point, but amorphous materials gradually soften over a range of temperature. Then cleavage property. So, to cut the crystalline material, we need to use sharp edged tool. Similarly, in amorphous, we need to use sharp edged but not as efficient to the crystalline tool. Heat fusion property. So, here Crystal material is having definite heat fusion property, but amorphous don't have the heat fusion property and isotropic property. Crystal materials having an isotropic in nature, but amorphous isotropic in nature. Above the arrangement of particles. In crystalline, the particles are arranged in long range as well as short range both the ranges are existed but in amorphous only short range is formed here your question is that what is mean by isotropic here amorphous materials no directional properties amorphous materials no directional properties that's the reason they are called isotropic in nature but whereas 
crystal materials their directions are their properties vary with direction the properties vary with directions that's why crystal materials are called an isotropic properties are changing with respect to direction in crystalline so they are called an isotropic in non crystalline no change in properties with respect to directionality then it is called isotropic these are the simple classification between amorphous and crystalline look here this is one of the example of crystal structure where sodium chloride is an example of crystal in a crystal we discuss a crystal is nothing but a repeating pattern or a repeating pattern where the atoms or molecules are arranged periodically and repeating form so here sodium chloride i consider in the sodium chloride we have two elements sodium and chlorine sodium is interact with the chlorine chlorine is interact with the sodium so the blue ion elements are sodium the green ion elements are chlorine here yeah, sodium is interact with the chlorine chlorine is interact with the sodium so like the this part pattern is repeating so this repeating pattern is nothing but crystal structure so in a crystal structure we need to consider some of the topic that is about space lattice what is space lattice space lattice is an infinite periodic array of mathematical points so the infinite array of points can be considered as space lattice so here in a space lattice the particles or the points are identical the looks same so that is about the lattice so the lattice it is consists of atoms then it is called bases so lattice and bases combinedly together called as crystal structure the combination of lattice plus bases both are called crystal structure a crystal structure is a periodic arrangement of atoms in the crystal that can be described by a lattice what is the definition that is periodic arrangement of atoms in the crystal which is explained by the lattice is nothing but crystal structure simply it is lattice plus bases is nothing but crystal structure in a crystal structure the fundamental characteristic is what in a crystal structure unicell is a fundamental nature characteristic what is the unicell in a crystal structure the smallest part is considered as unicell the smallest block or part in a crystal structure is unicell so here for example if you consider a wall the wall is constructed with number of bricks so because of number of bricks wall is constructed so the wall we can wall is constructed because of number of bricks and cement number of bricks and cement so brick and cement they combinedly together form wall similar way here in a wall all the bricks are the fundamental elements bricks are the fundamental elements in a similar way in a crystal structure unit cells also look like that only in a crystal structure the smallest part or smallest block is called unit cell in a wall how the brick is unit cell sorry how the brick brick is the smallest part similarly in a crystal structure the unit cell is the smallest part see the figure next lattice points and unicell what is lattice points the corner of atoms or points can be considered as lattice points because of lattice points a smallest block is formed in a crystal structure that is unicell unicell is again two types one is a primitive 
and non primitive see the figure so here the first one is primitive the second one with the extra point is non primitive so here let discuss about the primitive in a unit cell where only one atom is exist that is primitive if more than one atom is existing that is non primitive let's see we are going to calculate mathematically let us consider the mobile or any book or any computer we can see upper surface as well as lower surface for example i consider mobile i can see front and back surface the front surface is four corners as well as the back surface also having four corner total in front and back the corners are how many eight corners in a eight corners eight corners is consist of from up and down eight corners are present here so here these eight corners are shared by one by eight of the atom one by eight of the atom then it can be considered as eight into one by eight therefore the number of atoms in a primitive cell can be considered as how much it can be considered as one so those the unit cell which is having only one atom that unit cell are called as primitive unit cell once again i explain to you eight corners are there each of the corner is contributed by one by eighth of the atom of a unit cell one by eighth of the atom of a unit cell that's why it is eight into one by eight that's equal to one so those unit cell are having one atom that is the primitive the other parameter for the unit cell is lattice parameter of a unit cell let's see what is the lattice parameter of unit cell so let us consider a crystal upon the crystal if you draw normal lines so we put names x y z the x y z are considered as a axis so this axis we drawn on crystallograph crystal so that axis are called crystallographic axis so here upon the crystallographic axis let us consider some of the parameters that is a bar b bar c bar they are called unit vectors a bar b bar c bar and the sides are the edges are considered as small a b c a b c are called axial lengths and a bar b bar c bar parameters are unit vectors x y z are crystallographic axis between the crystallographic axis angles alpha beta gamma are consider they are called interaxial angles see here between x and y we consider gamma between z and y we consider alpha between x and z we consider beta here alpha and alpha beta and gamma are called interaxial angles these interaxial angles are used to determine shape and size of the crystal let's see another topic that is a miller indices what is miller indices a group of three numbers that indicates the orientation of a set of parallel planes and a crystal structure the parallel planes are indicating a group of numbers that group of numbers and parallel planes of lines of a crystal is called miller indices they simply defined with h k l small h k l if each atom in the crystal is represented by a point and these points are connected by lines the resulting lattice may be divided into number of identical unit cell it may be divided into number of identical unit cell the interact intersecting edges of one of the unit cell 
defines a set of crystallographic axes. So here, the intersecting edges of one of the unit cell defines a set of crystallographic axes. The Miller indices are determined by the intersection of the plane with the axis. The Miller indices determined by the intersection of the plane with the axis or with these axes. The reciprocals of these intercept are computed and fractions are clear to give the three Miller indices. So, one second, see. A set of three numbers and crystallographic axes can be considered as Miller indices. Here, how we can consider the Miller indices? Let us consider a unit cell. Upon the unit cell, we draw some parallel lines and we put some lattice names A, B, C. And upon these parallel lines, we have to consider axis of X, Y, J. Then we need to consider some of the intercept. That intercept must be considered into a reciprocal form. Then the reciprocal forms are converted into all numbers. So that is nothing but Miller indices. For example, I consider X, Y, Z axis on a atom of crystal structure. So upon this X, Y, Z axis, I consider intercepts are 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3. Now the Miller indices calculated as, what is the first step? We need to consider reciprocals of intercept. So what are the reciprocals? 2, 1, 3. Then 1 by 2, 1 by 1, 1 by 3. Now check the fraction. Then what is the same? That is on 6. Then 6 by 2, 6 by 1, 6 by 3. What is the answer? 362. What is that? 362. So the answer is how much? 362. Then 362 is nothing but Miller indices. So this is about the Miller indices. Thank you.